Welcome to the Living Word. A ministry of Bethel Baptist Church located in the Greenfield, Indiana. The message today is brought to you by our pastor, Dr. Randall Parker. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed the service that's already in progress. Now take your Bible, if you would, and turn to 2 Peter with me. 2 Peter chapter number 3, the last chapter, and just the last few verses of the chapter. Uh, we'll read verse 17 and 18. I want to share something with you. I was visiting at Methodist this past week and uh, was walking down the hall, returning to parking lot one. And uh, coming out of Methodist Hospital, there's a long breezeway there that's uh, covered, and, and uh, they have pictures on the wall all the way down the breezeway of uh, historical pictures of Methodist Hospital. And then they have uh, a lot of pictures of Methodist uh, ministers and and uh, some quotes there, and I, I do my best to try to stop and read some of those quotes as I walk down through there. And uh, John Wesley, of course, who is the founder of the Methodist Church, had a quote up there that uh, I wanted to write down, and I didn't have a pen and anything. And then I got home and I realized I could have taken a picture of it with my camera. I always remember things like that when it's too late. But the quote, and I, I'm going to have to paraphrase it. I'm going to get it uh, uh, written down, and I'm going to get it framed. I'm going to put it in my office because I feel like it can help me. But the quote simply was saying this, uh, The longer I live, the less concerned I am with the mistakes of others. And the more concerned I am with my own mistakes. John Wesley said that in uh, 1756. No, 1556. And uh, how that spoke to my heart. The older I get, the longer I live. The less concerned I am with your mistake. And the more concerned I am with my mistake. I'm going to get that framed and put it on the refrigerator so Carolyn can see it every day as she's in the kitchen. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 3, verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. I want us just to concentrate on those two verses and some thoughts and some phrases in there that I believe will speak to our hearts and help us to better serve the Lord and better uh, love and be faithful to each other. The title of the message is Fading or Flourishing. Fading or Flourishing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for the Word of God. Lord, how more and more every day I'm impressed with the Word of God. Lord, how valuable it is, how precious it is, how fortunate and blessed we are to be able to live in a country that we can hold God's Word in our hand. We can read it at our pleasure and God to our blessing. I pray this morning as we've gathered here that you would honor us with your presence. God, make our time profitable. Bless those who come to visit us today. And God, just honor them with something special. And Father, all you do, we'll thank you, praise you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The first thing I want you to notice here is that this is written 
to believers. Uh, sometimes we get confused and, and we misinterpret things because we don't understand who this was written to. Here, uh, Simon Peter is writing to the beloved, the beloved. Aren't you glad God includes us in that term, the beloved? And he writes to us. He wants us to be informed. He wants us to be instructed. I'm awfully glad that God does not just uh, 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 lay out uh, rules and, and regulations and uh, walk away and, and, and uh, not give us uh, aids and helps and knowing how to please Him, how to honor Him. But if we'll listen to God, He'll say, Beloved, let me help you understand uh, my, my will for your life. Help me uh, to let you understand uh, uh, how to serve me in a, in a pleasing way. So he writes here uh, to Christians, and I'm awfully glad to be included in, in the beloved of God. I'm glad that he's willing to correct me. I'm glad he's willing to encourage me. I'm glad that he's willing to speak to my heart. He just doesn't leave me out there. And one of the great blessings of coming to church, God has something to say to every believer. Amen. Amen. I'm awfully glad. And, and you may be here uh, the, the worst sinner in the world. You may be the worst sinner in all the world. And if you are, your wife just give you an elbow and said, I told you he'd be talking about you. <laughs> We're glad you're here. Sinners are welcome. Amen. Amen. We're honored by anybody. You say, Preacher, I'm not a Christian. I wouldn't represent myself that way. We're so glad you came to be in church today. We appreciate it. And God's going to speak to your heart today. But thank God, He also speaks to His beloved. Amen. We have church so that God can speak to our heart. So the instruction here, this is written to believers. But the second term I want you to see, there's a caution to the believers. He says, beware. Beware. I'm glad that the Bible gives us instructions and, and gives us cautions and gives us warnings. Uh, can you imagine the trouble we could get into if we didn't have the Word of God that said, you don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. Stay away from that. Beware of that. Be cautious about that. I, I'm glad that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, and I'm glad when he does, he brings a security system. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? The Holy Spirit living inside of us has a security system that when we get too close to something that's going to hurt, we get involved in something that displeases God, there's a bell goes off on the inside. There's a warning goes off. You say, Preacher, I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, maybe you need to get saved. Because the Holy Spirit of God, when He comes in, cautions the believer. He comes in and He says, beware of this. Look out for this. Don't get involved in this. And, and, and sometimes we don't have a reason for it. There's been times when something comes up and the Holy Spirit rang that alarm system and said, Parker, stay away from that. Well, I, why? I don't see any issue there. I don't have to show you the issue. I'm just telling you, stay away from it. And so I listen to the Holy Spirit, and I uh, distance myself. I make a decision and a choice that I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit rather than listen to the flesh. And so I make a choice. And later on, most times down the road, something develops, and God says, you see there, that's why I wanted you to stay away from that. God's never wrong. He, he wants to bless us. He's already called us His beloved. I'm trying to help you here, He says. Sometimes when, when the Spirit of God speaks to us, we think God is trying to, to keep us from, from things. We, we, we think God is, is trying to uh, 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 take away things. But God never wants to take anything away that's good for us. Amen. God never wants us to be deprived of anything. That's a blessing. But when something comes up and God says, you better listen to me, beloved. I love you and I'm trying to help you. Listen to what God's saying. Amen. God says that he gives pastors to the church. 
in order to warn and caution and encourage and help uh, the church understand uh, what God wants them to know. We come here and we say it, and the Word of God is preached, and sometimes I think we just rejoice in the term beloved. God, I, I'm glad I'm a Christian. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad for the blessing. But God, uh, uh, then when the instruction comes and the warning, somehow there's just a, the blinders go up. Is God talking to me? Yeah. God's talking to all of us. So he's trying. Now, I'm going to get to the crux of the message in just a second. But you need to understand, God don't waste cautions. Amen? God don't cry wolf. Amen. Little boy who kept crying wolf, and there wasn't any wolf until the wolf come. He cried wolf, and nobody listened. Are you listening to me? God doesn't cry wolf. When there's a danger, God exposes the danger. He tells his beloved, stay away from this, do what's right, listen to me. And it's never uh, an exaggeration. God never uh, uh, overreacts. When God says something is serious, listen to me, child of God. We better listen to what God's saying. So you got your listening ears on? He said, beloved, I'm trying to tell you something here. Beloved, I'm going to warn you of something here. I'm trying to help you. Let's go on. Thirdly, is the possibility for believers. He says, lest you be led away with the error of the wicked. Now, this is going to blow some folks' mind, but I don't mind that. Uh, Sometimes we need to be shaken up. Do you realize that a saved person can do anything that a lost person can do. He says the wicked are going in this direction. Now, beloved, I'm trying to help you, he says. I'm warning you. I'm I'm going to give you some advice. I'm going to give you some, some news here so that you won't be led in the path that the wicked have chosen. Well, preacher, a saved person's not going to do what a, what a lost person would do. They can if they turn their back on the warning that God gives to the beloved. So he's saying, lest you be led away. I don't want you to be to be lured. The word there means to be lured. To be, you, uh, when we get saved, there's a difference in believers and unbelievers. Of course, you know that. But unbelievers are under the control of Satan. He has them. He's, he's, he is directing them. He has a pull upon them that, that uh, is in their very nature to follow the world, the flesh, and the devil. And so uh, men do things that they don't even want to do because of Satan's influence upon them. I've heard people say, a drunk's a drunk because he wants to be a drunk. No, no. I know some drunks who would love to be good, clean people, but Satan's got such a hold on them and that they they don't get saved. So what are they going to do? Amen? They they can't do anything but what Satan does. So Satan has uh, bindings upon us. Satan's, uh, the Bible calls it uh, strongholds in our life. Things build up there that, that overcome us. But when we get saved, all of that is defeated. Amen? All of that is destroyed. All of that is wiped away. Satan has no chains on me. Satan has no chains on you. So what can can he do? He can't pull us with the chain, but he lures us. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And he sprinkles the little bait out there. Come on. Come on, and pretty soon we find ourselves being led in the same path that the wicked are trotting. And he's saying, you don't want that for your life. Can I tell you something, Christian? You may think that you could enjoy sin, but if you're saved, you can't go back and live the life you used to live. You cannot do that and enjoy it. I, I think that many, many have 
uh, gotten saved and uh, delivered from sin and delivered from uh, the things that Satan bound them with. And uh, maybe a few months down the road, now some of you are going to say, yeah, I've been there, preacher. A few months down the road, you get a little discouraged or some old buddy comes by and, and well, come on, go with us. Well, I don't know. Oh, come on, you too good to go with us now? I don't know. Come on. And he sprinkles a little bait. And you go with that old crowd you used to run with. And you know what you do? You're miserable. You're miserable. You can't enjoy the sin that they enjoy. You can't participate without guilt and without shame. Now, some of you have been down this road... And I assure you that after a little while, you sat there and you said something like this. God, I'm sorry I got involved in this. And if you'll get me home this evening, I'll never do this again. Amen. You say, God, God let you do that? I think God might take his hand up a little bit and say, okay, big boy, let me show you how miserable you're going to be. You try to go back and get involved in that life you used to be in. Amen. And, and you know what? If you can go back, if you can, can, can just assimilate right back into that mess, go right back into it, you never did get saved. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Now, he can go back to the old places, but you're not going to enjoy it. There's going to be guilt. There's going to be shame. You're going to can't wait till you get out of that mess and you're going to go to God and say, God, I'm sorry, and I realize now exactly where I was at when you saved me. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. All right, let's go to the, the third issue here I want to bring up. This is Satan's desire. If, if now, beloved, dear, beloved child of God, uh, Simon Peter uses the word beloved. John used the word little children. He used that a lot, little children. But he's talking to Christians, and he said, Now, I've got a warning for you. I've got a warning for you. Because whether you believe it or not, you can be led right back to the path that you came out of. But listen to me. This is Satan's desire for you, that you might fall from your steadfastness. Well, preacher, I didn't think you could fall from your salvation. Hey, that didn't say salvation. That said steadfastness. He's not warning you about losing your salvation. He's talking about you falling from your steadfastness. Now, I want to give you just a little bit of Greek definition here. The word fall does not mean to tumble off. It's not like Humpty Dumpty sit on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had, a, you know, all the kings, you know that story. It's not falling off the wall. The word falling here means to fade like a flower that is losing its bloom. When I read that, God said, I'm trying to keep Satan from having the victory in your life that you not fade like a flower whose petals are falling off. Your joy taken away. Your Christian beauty taken away. Your Christian influence taken away. I'm trying to keep you vibrant and alive because if Satan gets his claws into you, if Satan gets you back on that trail of the wicked, if Satan gets you back in that old lifestyle, what it's going to do, you're not going to, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be cheerful. You're not going to be smiling. You're going to lose everything in your appearance that makes you look like a Christian. I wonder how many are fading. How many are wilting? And how many's bloom 
that beauty that God puts inside, that joy that God puts inside is being dehydrated and fading because you didn't listen to God's warning and you're being led back to the path of the wicked. We've got a plant in there in the office and it's a carryover from several years ago. Maybe someone would know who. Carolyn could probably tell me. But it's a great big plant that was left over from a funeral here at the church. And the uh, funeral director said, why don't you just keep this? And we did. And we've had it for several years back there. It's not always easy to remember to water that thing. Amen, Brother Mike? <laughs> it's just hard to remember. It's beautiful. We enjoy it being in the office, and it brings some greenery. It brings some life, and, and I enjoy it being there. But if you neglect it, first thing you know, it's drooping. And somebody will say, we forgot to water the plant. And they go get a couple of cups of water and pour on it, and it'll refresh. I don't like to see it drooping. Can I tell you, I don't like to see Christians that are dehydrating. Amen. Amen. Christians that are, are wilting. And, you know, sometimes we can wilt on the inside while we're keeping the foliage up pretty good. But sooner or later, not only is the inside going to dehydrate, but the outside is going to begin to wilt. He said, Beloved, I don't want that to happen to you. I love you, and I'm trying to caution you, he says. I'm trying to help you understand that if you're not awfully careful, that even you can be led down the path of the wicked. And if you do, you're going to dehydrate. You're going to lose your bloom. You're going to lose your happy. You're going to lose your joy. Can I tell you, one of the first symptoms of a person that has begun to be careless in their behavior, careless in their actions, is the joy's gone. We don't sing with, with glory anymore. All of a sudden, the Bible's just another book. All of a sudden, prayer time has very little to offer. And what's happened? Beloved, beloved, you've been led into the era of the wicked. And you have lost your joy. You've faded. You've fallen from your steadfastness. Now look at the second thing in the verse. But this is God's will for the believer. That you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Beloved, I don't want you to lose your bloom. I don't want you to lose your smile. I don't want you to lose your joy. I want you to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to gain ground, not lose ground. Can I tell you one of the most natural things in the world is to begin to believe that you can hold in neutral. Some time ago, we were, let's see, where was it? It was in Costa Rica. And some of those streets down there are very hilly. Costa Rica is very mountainous. And uh, if you've ever been to some of those foreign countries, almost every vehicle is a straight drive. That would cause more divorces in America than anything I can think of. <laughs> almost all of them are straight drive. So, preacher, where are you going with this? Just hang on. In that traffic, you can, you can see them pull up on a hill with a straight drive vehicle. They pull up on a hill, and they have to stop, and so they hold the vehicle with the clutch. Does anybody know what I'm talking about now? And that they're holding that vehicle, keeping it from sliding back with the clutch. Don't do that. Put the clutch in, pull the brake up, and let off and take a... Now, 
That's why I don't teach my wife <laughs> to drive a straight drive. Because if you, if you don't do something, when you stop, gravity's going to take over, and you're going to go back. The Christian life, folks, if you're not exercising effort to go forward, gravity will take you back. And you lose your joy. You lose your smile. You lose your expectations. You lose anticipation. It just everything begins what to fall from your steadfastness. God said, I don't want that. I want you to be growing. Not fading, but growing. Amen. Amen. I don't want you to lose ground. I want you to gain. The word growing here has the picture. Actually, the, 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 the Greek word means to be waxing. And it has the picture of you taking a candle wick and dipping it in hot paraffin, you raise it up, it's got a coating. You let it cool and, and uh, form, you drop it back down, pull it up, it's got another coating. And what's it doing? It's getting bigger. Every time you dip it in and take it out, it's gaining some ground. And the Lord said, I don't want you to fade and fall from your steadfastness. I want you to come into church, and every time you come in, you get dipped, and you get a little bigger. You grow a little more. Yes. Sunday night, you get dipped again, and you grow a little more. Amen. Now, last night, we got invited to Ellen's house, and evidently there's a group in the church, I don't know how many started out, but with a covenant to lose weight. I don't know why they asked me to come to a meeting like that. But uh, they had gone through their weeks or months or whatever, and this one lost so much, and this one lost so much, and this one lost so much and everything. And I said, oh, while we're here, we're going to eat. <laughs> you never seen so much food spread out in your life. I said, what's the purpose of this? But I was glad to be there with them. I ate. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, every service every day.